a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in Exploring ETFs. Hi everyone, welcome to Exploring ETFs. I'm Nina Mishra and today we are talking about biotech ETFs and we haven't talked about biotech in a while and uh, these companies, some of the smaller biotech companies have jumped lately and that is because of this uh, resurgence of deal activity in the biopharma space and particularly some smaller biotech stocks have surged because of this deal activity. So in the first quarter, total healthcare and life sciences M&A in the US was about $71 billion dollars. Uh, according to KPMG, and that is more than double the $28 billion uh, in the same quarter last year, Q1 2022. And uh, one of the main reasons for this increased deal making activity is, is that big pharma companies are sitting on significant cash piles. And healthcare was, in fact, one of the top performing sectors last year because of uh, risk of sentiment in the markets. These pharma stocks have done quite well. And according to EY estimates, life sciences companies had more than $1.4 trillion in cash and other capital by the end of last year, which they could, of course, use for deal-making activities. Now, these companies are looking to add new drugs to their pipelines because their top selling products are going to lose patent protection in the coming years. And the Wall Street Journal reported that executives at Pfizer, Merck, and Novartis, they all said they are, that they are looking for new drugs. So that also suggests increased deal-making activity in 2023. Now, remember, these uh, biotech stocks were huge beneficiaries of the pandemic because many of these companies were developing vaccines, treatments, uh, etc., for COVID-19. And uh, many stocks had surged. Then last year, these stocks plunged uh, as interest rates rose and investors dumped riskier companies. So now the valuations look attractive, and that could also boost mergers and acquisitions. Now let's take a look at some of the prominent uh, deals that have been announced recently. So the biggest one is Pfizer's deal to acquire Seijin for $43 billion. Uh, and this would be the largest pharmaceutical transactions, transaction since every acquired, agreed to acquire Allergen for $63 billion in 2019. Now remember Pfizer uh, has seen a steep decline in sales of its COVID vaccines and treatments. So it is looking for some other promising drug uh, that could boost its sales. And the season, as I mentioned, it makes uh, uh, drugs that are designed to that are designed to target and kill cancer cells without harming healthy cells. Now, another interesting deal is uh, by Merck uh, agreeing to buy Prometheus Biosciences for about eleven billion, ten point eight billion dollars, and uh, Prometheus makes. Um, immune disease treatments, uh, particularly for uh, colitis and Crohn's disease. And uh, in case of Merck, uh, it's uh, star cancer treatment, Keytruda. Uh, Keytruda's patent could expire in 2028. So it needs some other promising drug to replace those um, annual revenues. Then another one uh, recently announced deal is uh, British pharma giant GSK's uh, deal to acquire Canadian biotech Bellus Health. And Bellus is developing a promising cough medicine. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, ETFs in the space. So the first one I'm highlighting is uh, the most popular product in the space uh, by iShares IBB. 
uh, has uh, 7.9 billion in assets, charges 44 basis points. It is top heavy uh, because of its market cap weighting. Uh, let's go to the code page on sax.com to learn more about the CTF. So you can read our research report, articles, etc. And using the link, you can go to iShares web page for the CTF, see what it does, and also look at the holdings. So that will give you a, an idea of the kind of exposure you will get in this ETF. So as I said, it is top heavy. Come the giants in the space, Vertex Pharma, Mgen, uh, Gilead, uh, Regeneron, Biogen, these are the top holdings in this ETF. Now, the second ETF I wanted to mention is by Invesco. So this tracks an index which is quite similar to IBB's and the ticker is also similar, IBBQ here. Uh, similar index, similar market cap weighting, much cheaper, 19 basis points, but much smaller to just 20 million in assets. This was launched in 2021, uh, despite uh, its low expense ratio, hasn't really taken off uh, because last year was a tough year for biotech ETFs in general. Uh, so if you are a longer term investor, you can take a look at the CTF, uh, but if you are planning to trade, the trading costs are going to be high, so be careful. Uh, now, the third one I'm highlighting is by State Street. This is different because this is an equal weighted product and uh, the ticker symbol is XBI. Because of equal weighting, it is tilted towards smaller companies, charges 35 basis points, and this is also quite popular with 6.7 billion in assets. And again, let's go to the code page on zax.com using the link. Let's go to the External web page, uh, Immunogen, TG Therapeutics, Viking Therapeutics, you see Prometheus there too, which contributed to recent outperformance by this ETF. Now, the next two I'm highlighting focus on smaller companies. So with XBI, you will get equal weighted exposure to small with a tilt, sorry, small and large companies with a tilt towards smaller companies. And these two next ETFs focus on small and mid cap stocks. S-Bio by Alps. This focuses on small and mid cap companies that have one or two drugs, sorry, one or more drugs in phase two or phase three of FDA clinical trials, has about uh, 114 million in assets and charges 50 basis points. So let's see what it, this CTF holds. Um, let's go here and look at the holdings of this ETF. Uh, so Prometheus is the top holding and that contributed to its outperformance recently. Uh, many other companies uh, have also uh, done quite well. These are not well-known companies, at least I do not know much about these companies. Uh, so let's go to the next one. Uh, so this is by principle. Uh, the ticker symbol is BTEC. This is an actively managed ETF which focuses on small and mid cap healthcare stocks, uh, 55 million in assets and charges 42 basis points. And let's see what this ETF holds. Uh, so uh, this uh, uses active management uh, to uh, look for innovative companies in the uh, in the space and particularly focusing on small and mid cap companies which do not have uh, a lot of analyst coverage. Uh, let's take a look at the holdings. So you will see Seijin and uh, uh, Prometheus also and uh, Ex, uh, other well-known companies like uh, Exact Sciences, slightly well-known companies, uh, Exact Sciences, Illumina, Serapta, Therapeutics, these are also among the top holdings in this ETF. Now on the next slide, I have the comparative performance over the past year of all these uh, ETFs and versus the S&P 500 index, and I've also included the broader healthcare 
ETF XLV over there. So all these uh, ETFs, they returned between 17 to 22 percent over the past year. And then uh, uh, thanks mainly to recent outperformance, XPI was the best performer. And during this period, the S&P 500 index was up about 2 percent and the healthcare ETF Sorry, the health broader healthcare ETF was up about four percent. On the next slide, I have the performance uh, over the past one month, when some of these have really jumped. So ours is the best performer up about eighteen percent over the past month, and we saw the reasons uh, for the outperformance thanks mainly to Prometheus and some other smaller biotech companies. XPI has also done quite well and the one by principle uh, these two are up about nine ten percent and uh, the other etfs s p 500 index and the broader uh, healthcare etf as well as the broader market cap weighted biotech etf they're all almost flat over the past month thanks for watching make sure to check out zax.com slash promo for an interesting offer and also make sure to subscribe to our youtube video channel so that you do not miss any episode and i will see you next week